land of the free by the Carib Sea, our manhood we pledge to thy liberty. No tyrant here linger, the spots must flee this tranquil haven of democracy. The blood of our sires, which hallowed the sod, brought freedom from slavery, oppression's rod. By the might of truth and the grace of God, no longer shall we be hewers of wood. Arise, ye sons of the Bayman clan, put on your armor, clear the land, drive back the tyrants, let them Land of the free by the Carib Sea. Nature has blessed thee with wealth untold, or mountains and valleys where prairies roll. Our fathers, the Bayman, valiant and bold, drove by. Invader, this heritage hold from proud Rio Hondo to old Sarstun, true coral isles over blue lagoon. Keep watch with the angels, the stars, and moon for freedom comes to morrow's noon arise ye sons of the bayman's clan put on your armor clear the land drive back the tyrants let the spots flee land of the free by the Carib Sea Thank you Mr. Estita for that rendition of the National Anthem before I acknowledge the MC, uh, Teresita is also a graduate of E.P. York High School and University of Belize. Um, I'm sure uh, Sister Elsa did a wonderful job um, in providing that foundation for Teresita. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mistress of Ceremony. Uh, Miss Martita. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant good afternoon. On behalf of the Palatine Centennial Memorial Project Committee, I wish to welcome you to the inauguration of this plaza in honor of the Palatines. I welcome in particular our keynote speaker, and I'm a bit concerned she's not here but hopefully she will miss Marilyn Young from the um, National Institute of Culture and History. Uh, Mayor Jorge Rosales uh, from Benque Viejo and members of the town council and Mr. Kong, the vice deputy, the deputy mayor. Uh, our area representative, the Honorable Jorge Melina Spat. Sister Clara Teul, Provincial of the Palatines in Belize, uh, 
and um, other Palatines present, Sister Josefina, Sister Consuelo, and Sister Katarina, and um, the novice, right? Uh, the aspirant, aspirant. And she's from Haiti, right? From Haiti. A Father Bo, associate pastor at Mount Carmel Parish. A Jesuit Anthony de Mello once said, you have yet to understand that the shortest distance between a human being and truth is a story. Today we have many stories. Uh, the epic of the Palatine sisters and the story of a memorial to honor them. And I, I am sorry if you're tired about hearing the story, but I, I don't, um, I don't. The second decade in this century witnessed 100 years of service of the Palatine Missionary Sisters to the people of Belize in the fields of education and healthcare, having found their first home in Benke, Viejo del Carmen. The centennial was celebrated modestly in an age of flux marked by a global pandemic and stringent measures made upon the population civil unrest and a war that has had economic and social repercussions. In some communal pain, reminiscent of St. Paul's celebrated lines to the Romans, we know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, says St. Paul, we also groan within. In this dawning towards redemptive adoption, we are faced with uneasy winds marked by an iconoclastic culture which, in the name of social and cultural consciousness, threatens to deconstruct and cancel our narratives, robbing us from our historical memory. Pope Francis denounces this current culture which has led us to become shallow, uprooted, and distrustful. This has led to a crisis of meaning. In this regard, it is essential to reach out to our stories for us to be sustained, reconciled, and renewed. The Epic of the Palatines. It was the 19th day of March, 1913, the Feast of St. Joseph, when the first Palatine nuns arrived on Belizean shores. The task of a new foundation in the Americas was given to four of them from Germany, Sister Francesca, Dominica, who would head the mission in Benke, Alacoque, and Prisca. The original plan was then for them for, to take passage on the ill-fated Titanic in 1912, but a providential error in one of the sisters' passports prevented them from doing so. The sisters boarded instead the liner SSS Bremen, which caught up with the Titanic disaster south of Newfoundland one week later, where they saw the dead bodies still floating in their life vests. The sisters were welcomed at Stella Niagara in New York. And that same day, a letter had arrived signed by Jesuit Father Arturo Versabel, pastor at Benque Viejo, soliciting teachers for the British Honduras mission. It was the feast of Our Lady of Good Counsel. Approval from Marienborn in Germany was granted to open a mission in Belize, and the four pioneer sisters traveled to Central America, accompanied by the superior sister Francisca. The clarion, dated March 20, 1913, says, the mail steamer which arrived on Monday brought among her passengers five members of the orders, the order of the Sisters of Pious Missions, the Palotini. These ladies are from Germany, but came to us from their convent in the United States. Sister Dominica takes charge of the new convent in Benque Viejo and will with others teach at the public schools. Sister Frances has come to establish the convent and will return to the United States as soon as this is accomplished. The party, accompanied by Reverend Father Versabel, left Belize by the Cacique at 6.15 p.m. on Monday, March 17, and arrived at El Cayo at 4 a.m. on Wednesday, March 19. 
In their book, uh, 50 Golden Years in British Honduras, the Palotans describe the arrival of the sisters in Benke as follows on March 19, 1913, after a grueling trip by river from Belize to El Cayo and a two-wheeled horse-drawn wagon from El Cayo to Benke Viejo, sisters Mary Dominica, Alfonsa, Leocadia, and Reynildis, pioneers of the mission in British Honduras, reached Benke Viejo. Here they were received like angels from heaven by simple people, most of whom had never seen a sister before. In fact, when they visited the nearby village of Sokots, the children knelt in reverence before them. So this is the story. But there are many other stories, like the pandemic of 1918. Five years after their arrival, the pandemic of the Spanish flu hit British Honduras. In this part of Belize, the death toll was 7.8% out of a population of 1,300. On December 22, 1919, Father Versavel wrote the following letter which alludes the low mortality rate in Benke and Sokot to the nursing of the Palatines. It reads, as I recollect, the pest struck us towards the end of October. It developed rapidly, especially in Sokot. Our hardest time was in mid-November, when at one time we had between Sokot and Benke, seven to 800 people stricken at the same time. 70 people out of 310 died in Sokot and 33 in Benke. Of course, we were busy day and night. One day, I counted my calls in Sokots, attending individually 123 people, either materially or spiritually. Relief Committee did good work, but I was too busy to do much of that work, on only referring destitute cases to them. Relief was also given, always. The sisters did excellent work. I generally divided the work with them by visiting the northern part of the town in the morning, while they took the southern. In this, they would refer to me all urgent cases at noon when I also informed them of the names of those who most required their help. Sister Dominica caught the plague and was for several days in great danger. Sister Reynildis had a slight attack. I had nothing but tired legs and bones every day and the sad pity of burying my people. School was opened in the second week in December with very little attendance. The pest lingered about us till February, signed Arturo Versavel. When the Palatines celebrated their golden jubilee in 1963, they had founded convents in all districts throughout Belize except Stan Creek, staffing most of the Catholic primary schools and all the public hospitals. In August of 1971, sisters Josela, Jones, Alessia, and Evangeline had to carry forth the heartbreaking task of closing the convent in the community that was first home to the Palatines. After Vatican II, the Palatine sisters, like many other religious communities worldwide, went through a series of vocations. The convent in Benke Viejo was the first to be closed. Our next story is that of the Carmen Plaza. We broke grounds for its reconstruction on the 4th of July this year with funds, which we estimated would take us through the first phase to see the memorial of Sister Dominica installed. Divine Providence had it that through the support of the public and private sectors and so many Belizeans, we would gather enough funding to bring the project to completion. Today, the Carmen Park, built by Mayor Alif Coleman in 1972, has made way for this plaza, a testimony of partnership and commitment in keeping alive a narrative marked by resilience, beauty, and determination. The great little doctor of the church, Therese of Lisieux, did say it right when she stated that if your cause depends on money, then it is not a good one. 
The plaza that honors the Palatines give honor as well to the good heart of the people of Belize who have chosen to believe in the story. I wish to acknowledge the members of the Centennial Memorial Project Committee who are present here, who have worked diligently to bring this project to fruition. I also wish to highlight the disposition of Mayor Rosales and his councillors for entrusting to us this site for the installation of the memorial. Which leads me to the final story. The memorial being unveiled today is that of Sister Dominica Sen, instructing a child. This piece, sculpted by Guatemalan artist Sebastian Barrientos del Bosque, is a tribute to the charism of the Palatines, and by extension, all pupil teachers whom they took under their wing. The sculpture was completed on November 21, 2019, and got stranded in the warehouse at a law firm in Guatemala City during the lockdown until March 15, 2021, when it finally made its way across the border. A legal memorial had to be drafted confirming its authenticity and purpose. It was then stored in one of the corridors at John Paul II Junior College until Independence Day Eve this year, when it was transported to Mrs. Guerra's yard across the street. On the eve of Hurricane Lisa, I woke, I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about the monument. The workmen had safeguarded everything except the piece. The resin piece, which is very light, in its partly torn plywood box had been left out in the open. Early in the morning on All Souls Day, I called upon the working crew to bring the piece downstairs at my house. Today, the statue of Sister Domin Dominica has finally and finally found a rest, a place of rest. After seven years, when we first instituted a committee. Seven years is not that long when we consider uh, Gaudi's famed Sagrada Familia in Spain that has taken more than 100 years to build and, and remains incomplete. Del Carmen Plaza in honor of the Palatines is an effort to keep the narrative alive, your narrative. The work of the Palatines played a key role in the nationalist movement which made George Cadell Price, an ardent supporter of the church-state partnership in education. The monument based on the only available photograph of Sister Dominica, Hess, a German of 32, 33 years of age, brings to mind the ideals which drove scores of women to take on the call of a Roman cleric, precursor of Catholic social thought, to make a difference in the world. The piece contains certain outstanding features, deliberately done so by the artist. The face of Sister Dominica looking at the child, the child looking at the book, the book resting on sister's lap, and the rosary dangling on the side. This draws us to reflect on the so many whys and hows. What impelled these women to cross the oceans, to give up themselves in the service of others, and of all places, British Honduras, the backyard of the British Empire? What impelled so many Belizean girls to believe in that narrative? Whatever our thoughts, one thing is clear. Belize would not be the same were it not for the Palatine sisters who embraced the call to build a homeland. In the words of Brazil's Cardinal Silva Henriquez, we, he said, all of us are builders of the most beautiful work, our homeland, the earthly homeland that prefigures and prepares the heavenly homeland that has no borders. That homeland does not begin today with us, but which cannot grow and bear fruit without us. That is why we receive it with respect, with gratitude, as a task begun many years ago, as a legacy that inspires in us both pride and commitment. 
Cardinal Enriquez's words have been encapsulated in George Price's vision for Belize when he said, Christian democracy can transform and renew Belize if Belizeans are good citizens. And what shall we say is a good citizen? George Price says, he, and the word includes she, is a good citizen anywhere in the world. He is a good citizen of earth and of heaven, bringing earth nearer to heaven, perfecting creation from which will arise the new world of time and eternity. Sisters, your key, your predecessors and yourselves have been key in making Belizeans good citizens, and we thank you for that. Un aplauso, por favor. I wish to thank you and your predecessors for your ardent service to the people of Benque Viejo and Belize in general. We are conscious of the efforts that your community is going through. However, let us find the strength and guidance in the epic of your predecessors. It took four of them to change the course of our story. Only four, Dominica, Alfonso, Leocadia, and Renildis. Indeed, they have poured upon Belize and its narrative the gift of their sacred spirit. Your story is an inspiration. Your story is power. May the legacy of the Palatines live on, and within it all, may Christ reign. Thank you. And I would like to share what he wrote. He said, it was our great honor to support this important project in honor of the Palatine sisters who have played such an important role in Belize's development, particularly in the area of education. Honorable Francis Fonseca's words. Thank you. Muy buenas tardes a todos. Bienvenidos esta tarde. Gracias por la invitación. Mr. David Ruiz, gracias a la comitiva de este proyecto. Eh, le doy gracias y muy buenas tardes y bienvenido a varias personas conocidas. No conozco a todos, pero creo que todos tienen parte en que este parque se haya llevado a cabo. Este eh, puesto para conmemorar a las hermanas palotinas. Eh, conozco varias personas aquí que creo que son muy importantes también el pueblo es importante y creo que en una manera u otra hemos tenido una relación sea de pequeño o grande he eh, tenido una interacción con varias personas aquí y ya diciendo estas cuantas palabras le doy las gracias al señor David Ruiz por invitarnos a esto Eh, le doy gracias al señor Luis Ruiz por llevar a cabo este proyecto que se haya cumplido con tiempo, eficacia y con arduo trabajo de los trabajadores que tenían acá. Gracias al padre por la ceremonia. Gracias a las hermanas palotinas por estar acá presente. Si no hubiera sido por ustedes y por los antepasados, hermanas, este proyecto no estuviera acá. Entonces, pasando a esto, el año pasado recibimos la visita del señor David Ruiz y la, y la señora Felipita Valdés, quien nos explicaron el proyecto memorial del Centenario Palotino. Compartieron sobre la importancia del reconocimiento que los benqueños en general deberíamos tener por las monjas palotinas y, el servi y los servicios que ellas habían hecho. Para la población de Benque Viejo, durante las décadas del siglo XX, de niño siempre escuché las historias de mis mayores, 
sobre la época, las monjas y sus labores en las escuelas. Comparto estos sentimientos porque sabemos que siempre es bueno ser agradecido. El señor Ruiz y la señora Valdés comentaron que ahora que el proyecto ya estaba en la etapa final, el comité se encontraba con otro obstáculo. El problema era dónde instalar el monumento para que fuera visible a todo público. Con esto nos enviaron una carta formal solicitando el uso del Carmen del Plaza para renovarlo e instalar el monumento. Soy consciente de que la colaboración entre el ayuntamiento y las organizaciones comunitarias es muy importante. Para la mejora de nuestro municipio, el proyecto conmemorativo del Centenario de las Hermanas Palotinas <coughs> llegó justo a tiempo y me alegro que nuestros concejales acordaron apoyar este proyecto que el Comité Conmemorativo del Centenario de las Palotinas, encabezado por el señor Ruiz y la señora Felipita y demás personas. Como contratista de obras y como alcalde, sabía que este parque necesitaría reparaciones. En el ayuntamiento tendríamos que planificar su renovación y, algún, y en algún momento, después de todo, 50 años es el promedio de vida útil de una construcción de concreto. Para edificios y estructuras construidas aquí, por ejemplo, el edificio del Town Hall, ya necesita sus reparaciones también, o mejor, un nuevo Town Hall. Esta renovación del Carmen del Plaza tiene características de un que me recuerdan las historias que nuestros mayores nos han compartido sobre monjas palotinas en Benquevieo yendo a 50 a 100 años atrás. La forma de barco sube por este cerro nos indica que debemos seguir adelante a pesar de cualquier obstáculo. La historia dice que las monjas alcanzaron el viaje en el fatigo del no alcanzaron el viaje en el fatigo del Titanic salvándose sus vidas para que luego algunas de ellas llegaran a cumplir su trabajo en la misión educativa y de salud. Hasta de agricultura, pues ellas también tenían su jardín aquí en Benque Viejo. Gracias de nuestros padres y madres y a las pioneras y pioneros como las palutinas, hoy tenemos benque, benqueños que son médicos, técnicos, arquitectos, profesores y demás profesionales. Sé que yo también, así como cada quien, tenemos una tarea de mejorar nuestras vidas y las de nuestros residentes. Promoviendo el respeto, la dignidad propia, el buen pensamiento independiente, el bienestar y el desarrollo general para sacar adelante a nuestro querido Benquevío del Carmen. El diseño también me recuerda a mis primeros años en la escuela primaria donde participamos en dramatizaciones Espero que los jóvenes hagan el mejor uso de esta plataforma que hoy que hay aquí. Esta es una oportunidad para que entendamos más y reconozcamos la influencia que tuvieron las monjas palotinas en la educación, salud y cultura religiosa nuestra, a nuestra gente. No entro en detalles porque sé que otros oradores lo harán. Quiero concluir diciendo que este evento es un claro ejemplo de que como nosotros, la Alcaldía Municipal, podemos trabajar en conjunto con las organizaciones comunitarias, con las instituciones del gobierno, con grupos empresarios y con aquellas personas que buscan el desarrollo de nuestro pueblo. El bienestar de nuestra gente, como alcalde de Benquevío del Carmen, de parte de nuestros residentes y de concejales, Entiendo una, extiendo una fraternal bienvenida a todos aquí presentes y a quienes nos ven a través de las redes sociales a este evento de inauguración de la renovada Plaza del Carmen dedicada en honra a la patrona del pueblo, la Virgen del Carmen y ahora reconocimiento a las hermanas palotinas cuyas vidas y esfuerzos en los ámbitos de, de educación, salud y cultura religiosa promovieron los valores cristianos y sociales que nos caracterizan como benqueños. Muchas gracias a todos.
Le damos las gracias a, al señor Jorge Rosales, el, uh, represent, eh, que nos representa aquí en Benque Viejo del Carmen. We give thanks to Mr. Jorge Rosales, mayor of Benque Viejo. As Thank you, mistress of ceremony. Uh, pleasant good afternoon for the bow. Mr. Ruiz. Sisters, CEO, Rolando Satina, our past dear representative, Honorable Dr. Ramin Hager, invited guests, Mr. Ruiz. I'd like to thank you for being here today in this special occasion. It's my pleasure to be here this afternoon and share this memorable day with my fellow people. It is indeed a historic milestone in our beautiful Benjibir and one that will stay implanted in our lives. The legacy of the Palatine Sisters is celebrated now in the narration of this plaza. They traveled a far journey and adapted to a completely new way of life. But even so, the contribution to our community is immense. This, is not, this did not stop them. And we can now see the fruits of their dedications and commitment. After arriving, they traveled along the Belize River and made their way to Benquerejo del Carmen. Where do where the tough journey and adapting to the completely new culture and climate began. They taught English to the people of Benquebiejo, who were mostly in Spanish. They educated those who were not fortunate enough to receive a proper education. They taught subjects like gardening, sewing, and woodwork. They made sure to focus on the arts as well. Subjects like painting and acting were largely incorporated. In 1920, they established a convent in San Ignacio where they continued to serve the community. The sisters were on a mission of spreading God's word and performing charitable work in their community. Today, their presence continues to be seen around the country in Orange Walk, Belize City, and Punta Gorda. Their message of love and spirituality has truly made a difference in the lives of men. Today, we honor them as this triangular plaza represents the trip taken by, by them back in 1912. The park strives to serve as a green area for leisure as well as an engaging location for cultural and social events. I want to thank everybody who made this possible. Indeed, this plaza is a hallmark in our community to foster and promote identity and social cohesion that will play a significant role in arts, history and culture. I thank you all. Thank you, Honorable Jorge Milín Spat, 